Hey guys, welcome back to Parkour DXB's home learning videos. Today we're going to be working on precision jumps. Okay, so for today's lesson, we're going to need an open space and we're going to need some objects to jump to. So these could be things like yoga mats, uh, small rugs, we've got some cardboard that we've cut up. It could be random things like a dog toy uh, or anything like that, uh, plus any steps or maybe even exercise steps you may have. And obviously make sure that all these objects are not going to slip. So maybe find something that you can put them on like a carpet or a yoga mat. Before we get to jumping, we need to get our muscles ready and warm. Okay, let's get warmed up. Now, we're going to do lots of jumps today, so you might think we need to focus mainly on the lower, lower body, and we do, but actually a jump is a full body movement, so we're going to need to work all the way from the top down still. So we're going to start with the head, start looking side to side. Very good, now up and down. Good, few circles one way. And the other. Good, okay, we're gonna start now with the shoulders. So, arm down by the side, and essentially we're gonna try and jump off the floor, but we're gonna keep our feet glued to the floor. So jumping up. So imagining you're trying to jump as high as you can, but those feet just won't come off the ground. Good, okay. Now we're going to swing the arms crossing over in front, swapping what arm is on top each time. Okay, good. Moving on now, feet a little bit wider, arms up, our favorite twisting motion to get the spine, the center part of our body warm. A lot of the power in our jump comes from the core, so we're going to need to make sure it's ready to go. Good, swing the arm. Good, okay, and now we're gonna move on to the hips. So we're gonna come down low into a squat position, put our hands behind us, and get into our crab position. We're gonna push up with the hips here, so we're really engaging everything. This includes the shoulders, as well as the hips and the core, okay? From here, let's see if you can lift up one hand. Give me a bit of a wave. Swap the other hand. Good, now with one leg. The other leg. And then for a bit of a balance challenge, let's see if you can do opposite hand and leg. With a bit of coordination there on the hand and foot at the same time. Good, okay. So we're gonna stay in this position for as long as you can. If you need to rest for a second, please do, but get back up as soon as you can. So lifting up one leg. We're now going to draw big circles now with the toes. So you're going to really feel this one in your hip and in your core, trying to keep stable. Good, round the other way. Three or four circles is fine. Good, swap the other leg. And the other way. Don't let those hips drop down. Good, pushing back now into our squat. Okay, from here, we're gonna stand up, bring the feet together, hands on the thighs, and we're just gonna bend our knees a few times, okay? The heels can come up off the floor as we go down, so we're coming up onto our toes, forwards and back, good. Now we're gonna add a little bit of a circle to it, all the way down, all the way up, in one direction, and then the other. Good, okay, moving on to the ankles now. So we're gonna have our feet together. We're gonna to lift right up onto the toes. Then we're gonna come back and then lift our toes up and bounce on our heel for a second and then rock up to the toes, back to the heels, forwards and back, forwards and back. Good, okay, last one. We're gonna rock on the side of one foot over to the other one. So rock and rock. Side, side. 
If your body clicks a lot like mine, it's absolutely fine. Good, okay, this will get us started. Now we're gonna move on to something a little bit more specific. Okay, so as well as the joint rotations, we're also gonna do some strength exercises. This is really good for a warm up um, if we do just small amounts of them, to get the blood flowing through our muscles, but also to get stronger, especially if we do this a few times a week. So the first one I'm gonna start with is the squats. So we've done this many times in class, but make sure that your feet are facing forwards and they're about shoulder width apart. Your chest is gonna be up the whole time and bend the whole way down to here, our knees going forwards or outwards. Okay, what we don't wanna do, we don't want our knees to go inwards. It doesn't, doesn't work very well for our muscles and for our joints. So that's one, two, and I'm gonna continue to speed it up. Okay, wonderful. So this next one is gonna be calf raises. So whenever we're doing jumping or landing, we're using this muscle quite a bit, it's a big one here. So we're gonna have our feet together like this, and all we're going to do is go up to our tiptoes and then back down to our heels. Up to our tiptoes, back down to our heels. Again, I'll speed this up for you. Okay, great. So the next one is going to be lunges. So with lunges, we're going to be doing 10 of them, which is going to be five on each leg. All right. And you've probably done these in class again, but a lunge, you want to step forwards. This shin wants to be straight, so it should look like it's going straight down to the ground. And this back one is just going to slide out and you just tap the knee very gently on the floor like this. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five like this. Okay, and then the other side. Awesome. Okay, it's now time to start getting to jump. Now, before we can really get too deep into the individual techniques of how we begin the jump, we need to make sure we have a good landing. At the end of the day, the landing is where the injuries happen, so it's really, really important that we get this right. Okay, so we're gonna start just by doing some big jumps on the spot, landing where we are. Now, the basics are we're landing on the balls of our feet, okay? so. Think about when we were just doing the calf raises, we're lifting up the heels off the ground, this front part of your foot, the forefoot that is still on the floor here, that is the balls of your feet. We always land there, okay? This enables us to bend our knees, which is again the most important part, and we need to make sure our legs have some strength behind them, okay? We're not just landing and letting ourselves go flop all the way down to the floor until our butt hits our heels, we're controlling this landing. Okay, so now let's try a few. So we're jumping up as high as we can, landing nice and strong, okay? You might notice here that Barry is landing nice and quiet, okay? So as long as we're landing on the balls of our feet, we're bending our legs and we're aiming for a quiet landing, we're making sure the landings are soft and we're staying safe. Okay, so now it's worth mentioning a couple of really common faults with the jumps, all right? So the most common things, or the two things that can really go wrong most of the time is either you're gonna to jump too far or you're gonna to jump too little. Now jumping too far is fairly simple. You jump too far, you step forwards or you jump off, okay? Jumping not far enough can be a little bit more complicated. Now some of you know that we use a bounce back technique for this. Okay, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But for example, you'll know if you don't jump far enough on the floor, because you might find that your heels hit the floor before your, the balls of your feet do. Yeah, and as Barry's showing, it can be quite uncomfortable. So please do be careful of that, all right? We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about how we can prevent that a little bit later on in the video. Okay, now let's go through the bounce back in a little bit more detail. Now, this is mostly gonna happen if you're jumping onto an obstacle that is raised up from the ground. So you might have a step in your home, a set of stairs, or a little exercise step, or something like this you can use. We have here some steps that you can use, you might have for your kitchen, so you can reach the upper cupboards. Now this is a good example of something that will very easily move if you jump to. So if you are gonna use it, make sure you've got something to brace it, okay? So that's either someone sitting and bracing, maybe not the dog, <laughs> or up against a wall or another piece of furniture, making sure that it's not gonna do any damage to that furniture. Okay, now, for the bounce back. A bounce back again happens if we don't jump far enough and we find ourselves cutting a little bit short of our jump. Now, we wanna make sure that our feet make contact with the obstacle anyway, okay? 
and that we bounce back so we absorb, bounce back to the floor nice and safe, okay? This is safer than placing your feet down onto the floor because you may end up accidentally hitting your knees up against the obstacle or your shins or something like that, okay? Which obviously we want to avoid. So make sure we make contact with the balls of the feet, absorb, bounce back, and we're safe. Okay, now we've got the hang of the landing, we're gonna think about the jump itself. So we can jump off both one feet or two feet, and each has its own advantages and disadvantages, and we're gonna explore those and make sure we're good at them all. Okay, now we have our basic landing sorted, and we're safe doing so, we can start thinking about precision landings. Now, a precision landing is very, very common in parkour. Most jumps are gonna involve some sort of precision landing. And this simply means that we're landing exactly where we intend to, okay? This could be anything from a specific point on the floor, or it could be something like a really thin railing, okay? So now we're gonna need something to jump to, okay? We're gonna begin now with a piece of cardboard that we're gonna place down on our carpet to make sure that it doesn't slip. Okay, please make sure whatever your jump suit doesn't slip out from underneath your feet. So we're gonna take some time now from different distances and from different angles, jumping and landing down onto our obstacle. Now, if we think back to thinking about our previous landings, we're still landing on the balls of the feet and we're bending the legs, okay? Now, the goal of any jump is to stick the landing, okay? Sticking a landing means you land on it, in the right place on your feet and you stay there, okay? We do this to keep ourselves safe, so if we're jumping on something, we don't fall off, okay? And also it helps us to keep it in control when we're starting to add more movements around our jumps, okay? For example, you can land in a precision landing, not just from a jump, but from a vault or, for a, or from a swing. Okay, so we've talked about the landings, but now we'll be talking about the takeoff. So the takeoff is obviously going to give us the best chance to be able to get a good landing. So it's, whilst it's not as important, it's super, super important still. So the position that we have our feet in is that the balls of our feet are going to be kind of just on the edge of the obstacle so our toes can grip over the edge. Kind of like a monkey's feet would grab the edge of a branch or something. Um, obviously we're doing it on obstacles a lot in parkour, so walls and boxes and things. So as you can see, Harry's toes are going to be kind of over the edge. Let's go back down to the floor though for now. So the first thing is foot positioning, okay? The second thing is gonna be his arms. So he gets into a ready position for me with his legs bent and everything. You can see his arms are back here. Arms are gonna be a really good help in getting the power for the jump because as they swing forwards, you're gonna pull your body off the ground as well as your legs jumping, okay? So your arms are gonna be really good for power. They're also gonna be really good for setting where you jump, okay? So, if your arms go the whole way up, you're just going to go up and back down. Oh no, you lost your landing again. <laughs> um, if your arms just go forwards, really just straight forwards, you're not really going to jump much because you're just going forwards. So they're kind of like the controller of where you jump. Now actually, how we usually describe it is that if you've got a tennis ball in your hands and you just try and throw it as far as possible, you're probably going to throw it up at a nice angle like this. Okay, if you throw it straight forwards, Gonna start dropping straight away and so will you if you throw it at a nice angle it gives you a nice far jump okay so to demonstrate this we're gonna put in this landing position here and he's gonna set his arms backwards jump up and across like this and as you saw he gets like a nice arch this is called the trajectory all right and this is the path in which your body follows just like when you throw a ball how it curves over like this. If you can't get high enough to land well, you can put something on the ground to kind of give you a bit of an incentive. So he jumps here, goes over the plant pot and onto the landing. All right, so obviously don't get anything too high, but this is a really good way which we usually get you guys to jump a little bit higher on your jumps. I'm gonna do one more for example. Wonderful. So we've got foot positioning, arms and trajectory. Okay, so a really good test to see um, how your two foot jumps are is to see how far you can jump. Now obviously when we land, we still want to be landing, feet in the right position and stick in the landing, okay? Lovely, so as long as you're doing this, maybe do it two or three times 
and then you can make it slightly bigger. So if I move the landing a little bit more, it has to stay the same quality, but a little bit further. And we keep making this bigger and bigger and bigger, making sure that every single time we land in well. Okay, now we've mastered the two foot jump, it's time to start trying to jump off of one foot. Now, a one foot jump normally is done from running, okay, and we'll get to that shortly, but we're gonna to begin to learn the technique from standing still first. Now, a standing one foot jump is often referred to as a swing leg jump, and it is used in a few different ways that we'll get to shortly. Now, it starts off in a very, very similar way to our two foot standing jump, except when we bring our arms behind us ready to jump, as Barry's doing now, we also lift one of our legs, okay? This leg is now ready to swing at the same time as our arms, again, making sure we lift them high enough to get a nice path through the air, just like this. <laughs> okay, this one is moving around a lot. But, so, this works very much the same. So we're swinging the, the arm and the leg at the same time, looking for that lovely landing balls of the feet, okay? Now, the main bit we need to make sure we're getting right here, and the, the easiest mistake to make is we need to get those feet back together in the air in order for them to land at the same time. Okay, great. Now, this, the swing leg jump is used a lot of the time for when we're trying to jump from somewhere higher to somewhere lower, okay? Having that leg swinging and out in front early helps us with our accuracy too. So we might start here, jumping down to a nice soft landing, okay? Now, let's give this one a little bit of practice like we did with the two-footed jump. We're gonna take 10 to 20 jumps again now to practice how far we can go. Let's see if you can do a swing leg jump just as far as you can do a two-footed jump. Okay, so from doing that little challenge, you've probably realized you can't get as far on the swing leg jump as you can on the precision jump. Now this is obviously because you're jumping for one leg rather than two. However, the next technique we're moving on to gives us actually more distance than the precision jump. So this is called the running jump. And how we're gonna start this is by focusing on where we take off. So Harry's got this marker here. This is his takeoff marker, but we can pretend it's the edge of an ob obstacle, like a box or something or a wall. And all he's gonna do is he's gonna take two steps into it. So he's gonna go one and two and make sure that his foot is accurate on this part. Now, obviously, if you're doing a running jump, maybe your foot might be a little bit before it, which isn't the biggest problem. What we don't want to do is have our foot after it, because that means it's not on it at all. Okay, so we're gonna practice this a couple of times. We'll go step, step, and just make sure we're getting it in the same place. Oops, trying to destroy it everything whilst we're doing it. So the next thing we're gonna work on is the swing leg takeoff, just like before. So we go step, step, and as you can see, just like the swing leg takeoff, this foot's behind. This is gonna do the same thing as before, it's gonna swing up, and that's gonna get us a little bit of our distance and accuracy, okay? So we'll try it, one, two, kick, like that. Okay, we'll do it again. And one, two, kick, love. And now he's landing on an obstacle, okay? So we can start to make this more accurate. One, two, kick. You can even video yourself, make sure you're taken off at the same point every time, or at least a safe point every time. And then we can go back into the challenge and start making it bigger and bigger. And what you'll probably realize is that this is much easier to get further. Okay, so we're gonna do one more. Wonderful. Again, just like before, if you are landing very um, into it, like into the obstacle along the floor, we can just put a pot again somewhere around here to make sure we're getting the same height, just don't kick it. Lovely. Now we're on to the common faults and mistakes section. One we see very often is landing on one foot before the other. Now this can happen in a couple of different ways, either from stepping to the obstacle out of fear or landing with one foot slightly more outstretched. 
is much more safe to land on two feet, so make sure you get those feet together in the air. Another mistake we see a lot is not swinging the arms enough. So this comes back to our trajectory. If we don't swing our arms enough, we're not gonna get enough height in the jump and we're not gonna be able to jump as far. A third one is we see a lot of people either bending their knees too much or not enough. Both are not good for our bodies and we need to make sure we have enough tension in the legs and our strength behind our legs to be able to catch our bodies without bending them too much and bottoming out and hitting our bums to our heels. The second part of this is not bending the knees enough and instead bending at the hips. Again, this is not very good for our knees and we need to make sure we keep our upper part of our body upright. The final fault that we often see in our jumps is having not engaged our ankles enough, which causes us to do what we call an ankle thing. An ankle thing is where our toes are pressed up towards our shin, creating some compression on the ankle. It's very uncomfortable, not a serious injury, and we'll, the pain will often go after a few minutes, but still, we want to avoid it as much as we can. Challenge section. So the first challenge is two, one, two. So jumping from two feet, in the air splitting to land on one foot, stride in and land on two feet again. One of you displayed here. The next one is two, one, 180 and two. So this one's tricky because you've got to do a 180 jump halfway. The third one is two, one, 180, two and then an extra 180 at the end. Really, really tricky when we land on two foot at the end as well. Thank you very much for your comments so far. If you want to leave a comment in the section below, please do, even if it's just to say hi, but we'd really appreciate your feedback uh, or any questions you have. Keep those submissions coming to us on Instagram. We've loved them so far, and it's great to see you guys still keeping the parkour spirit going even when we're stuck indoors. So you can do that again at, at Parkour DXB or at Parkour DXB Kids. Okay, thank you very much, and see you next week. See you next time. Is it next week? It's going to be next week. Yeah.